HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy. On today's edition of HCAM News, we have the latest in Hiller Sports. We talk with Eric Carty about recent weather trends. School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh gives a school COVID-19 update and more. But first, after 34 years with the Hopkinton Police Department, and serving many of those years as the school resource officer, Officer Phil Powers is retiring. Here is a look at his final call, courtesy of the Hopkinton Police Department Facebook page as Officer Powers heads into retirement life. From all of us at HCAM, we want to wish Officer Powers the very best and thank him for his tremendous community service. Hopkinton Police Department, the entire town of Hopkinton, friends and family want to congratulate and thank my father, Officer Phil Powers, on over 34 years of service to the Hopkinton community. Officer Powers served in the United States Air Force and as a police officer in the town of Upton before transfer to Hopkinton in 1987, where he made an instant impact on the entire community. He has dedicated countless hours throughout his many roles within the police department and touched the lives of almost everyone he has met. His 17 plus years as a school resource officer has made a lasting impression on the lives of our community's young people, which he should be the most proud of. So he's able now to spend his time with his pride and joy, his family. Congratulations on an amazing career, Dad, and we'll see you on the senior tees. Thank you, my son, and thank you all my love and sister officers. I love you all. The SRL one. Um. I don't know where he is. Which is car 10? Oh, there it is. That was him, right? 10. Hello, everybody. Tom Nappy here with Eric Cardi. And today we are going to talk about some of the most recent weather trends in the Hopkinton area. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good, Tom. Thanks for having me on, as always. And before we get into the weather, uh, just real quickly, how's everything going at the DPW? I'm sure it was a busy week for you guys with the recent snowstorm. Yeah, real busy week. Uh, the guys put in a lot of hours uh, I think they went in Friday night at about 10 o'clock and didn't come home till uh, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. That was just to get some rest because they'd been up for over a day straight. And then they came right back in Sunday night uh, to continue on uh, getting the roads opened and uh, everything uh, safe for everybody to pass. So, uh, you know, kudos to the, the team down here. They do a great job of uh, getting everything opened up. Thankfully, it was a, a light and fluffy snow. That was the only uh, good part of it there. And we had about 
16 inches. I, you know, I would have believed that we had close to two feet when I went outside, but um, you know, I took several measurements and I checked with some other people in town. I know who do measurements and everybody had right around the 16 inch mark. It was just, just so light and fluffy. It looked like a lot more. Well, I know the official measurement in Milford was 17 inches. So I'd imagine Hopkins had right around there as well. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of this last storm, you know where that is record wise, as far as Hopkinton, uh, I'm, it's probably towards the top, I'd imagine. Yeah. You know what? I'm not sure, Tom, because I, I only have, um, our records going back about four or five years. Uh, we had, uh, you know, back in 2015, um, oh, yeah. this week, as a matter of fact, started a huge blitz where we had six weeks in a row of some really big storms. I think we had three of, uh, 15 inches or greater. Uh, alone back there so uh, i think you know it might might be in the in the top 10 15 but i'm not not 100 percent sure all right and uh so when we talked uh last time you mentioned that we're probably going to get snow somewhere mid-january and then it's going to warm up a little bit this obviously came in later january so you're only off by a week or two and that's uh really good in the weather business so i have to give you credit for that uh, but what's the uh, future looking like? Uh, should we expect more snow? Is it going to warm up? Uh, what's your prediction? So in, in the short term, you know, it looks like we're still in a stormy pattern. Uh, the long range models uh, haven't quite come to fruition yet. The way the jet stream is set up, it's basically splitting uh, New England right in half. And because of that, you've got warm uh, air on the southern side with uh, Gulf moisture, which has a lot of energy and get the cold air from Canada on the northern side, when those two clash, that just uh, causes all your storms. And that um, uh, line has not wavered at all. They thought that that would move up more to the north, giving us a lot warmer weather. But uh, we'll be back to seasonal weather, it looks like, next week, but still stormy. There's a potential for the end of next week for you know another big potential snowstorm. And then hopefully there's supposed to be a patent change somewhere around mid-February when we get back to um, you know a little bit uh, above seasonal average temperatures. But, uh, you know, I think every Saturday for the past uh, five weeks uh, has not even got out of the 20s. So that's been, been cold Saturdays and weekends. And that's going to be the case again this, this coming weekend. Going to be in the other uh, 20s again. I guess it kind of makes up for last winter where it was uh, fairly warm. Uh, yes. Yeah, we had, um, you know, this is only the second winter month in five or six years that's actually been below normal all the winter months for the past six years the temperatures have all been warmer than normal so this this is definitely uh bucking the trend <laughs> so pretty much you're saying buckle up there might be some more snow yep don't put away the shovels or the snow blowers yet <laughs> um, you know just the way this this setup is it's got the potential for uh, you know and, and it's been so hard for everyone to forecast because of that line uh you know, you can have anything from like, we're going to have tonight into tomorrow, rain, sleet, snow. It's just so hard until you get down to the, you know, a couple of days before it to figure out what that energy is actually going to uh, present. But, um, you know, it looks like we'll be seeing a mixed bag tonight. No snow, but uh, a lot of rain and then changing over to freezing sleet uh, into tomorrow. So tomorrow's, and then it's going to turn to a flash freeze. So tomorrow's going to be a little dicey. And uh, I know we were talking briefly about that before, uh, we started uh, filming this segment. Uh, what, what are you guys doing to uh, prepare prepare for that? Are you, are you getting those uh, the salt ready and all that type of stuff? Yeah. So right now the focus uh, for the highway, they've been out there pushing back all the uh, snow banks, uh, knocking them down so people can see, pulling out, widening the roads, uh, and trying to open up all the waterways now because we've seen a significant salt, snow melt in just the past couple of days with the warmer temperatures. Uh, with this rain, that will, will further uh, reduce that snowpack, but there's a lot of water uh, that'll be out there. So they got the drains opened up. Uh, it's going to be kind of difficult for them to pre-treat for this storm because it will be a lot of heavy rain. You can't put the salt down uh, ahead of time because uh, that'll just wash away. Uh, so hopefully uh, there's a little bit of a uh, break in between the heavy rain and before the sleet comes so they get some of the treatment down there. But just timing, you know, it doesn't look good. It's going to be the morning commute tomorrow around 8 a.m. when that cold air comes in. So hopefully... Uh, as it doesn't cause too many problems for the commute. So drive slow, folks. It could be uh, some ice on the roads. Out yeah, there. work from home tomorrow if you can. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, Eric, uh, thanks so much for all you guys do and uh, taking care of the roads after the snowstorm. And 
Uh, you guys always do a great job. And uh, thanks so much for filling us in on what to expect with upcoming weather. All right, Tom, if I could just add one quick thing, I just want to uh, give a big thank you out to, to the Hopkins residents of the great job they do in helping us shovel out the, uh, the fire hydrants. These guys work an incredible amount of hours and it takes us several days after a storm to get to the hydrants, especially when the roads are being pushed back and wide and widened. But we just want to really thank everybody who's out there. We've seen so many hydrants shoveled out and it's a big help to us on the fire department. We are going to take a quick time out, a whole lot more ahead on HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as Mapfree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Welcome back to HCAM News. A whole lot of Hiller sports recently took place. Here's a look at the latest action. On Wednesday, January 26, Hiller's wrestling battled Norton. Here's a look. Hillers take the 41-39 win. Seb Losada, James Muzzy, Cyrus Hansen, Jari Zadie, Devin Canty, Adam Destacio, and Jack Hoyt all had pins for the Hillers in the victory. On Thursday, January 27th, Hiller's Alpine Ski took place. Here's a look. One on the red course number 18, Margaret Cage from Hopkington. Time for number 919, Brian Marcetti, 31.42 on the blue course. Number 519, Liam Johnson from West Brown. The Hiller girls alpine ski team had a second place finish, while the boys team finished seventh. On the girls side, Clara Niss finished sixth overall. Libby Herlihy finished 14th and Lila Mato finished 15th. On the boys' side, Jack LaCoche finished 13th, Matthias Niss finished 26th, and Sam Lagoy finished 49th. Hiller Alpine Ski continues to just get better and better. Congratulations to Kate Powers on winning the weight throw at the prestigious Milrose Games in New York City, Kate Powers just continues to rack up the prizes in indoor track and field. On Friday, January 28th, Hiller Boys Hockey battled hard, but fell on the road to Medway 3-1. Also on Friday, Hiller Girls Basketball fell in a close one to Medway 52-47 at home. Kiki Fossbender had a team leading 14 points in the game. Boys Hoop was in Medway Friday night and took the 51 to 40 win. Jack Ionelli had 12 points for the Hillers in his first varsity start. Sam Pantera dropped 15 points in the win. 
Also on Friday, January 28th, Weston Boys Swimming captured a 91-78 win over Hopkinton. The Hillers had a number of swimmers qualify for the sectionals, including Caleb Burke, Sean Haley, David Pishaw, Tyler Fallon, and Kevin Gu. Girls Swimming also fell to Weston in a close one, 91-84. Tess and Eve Weatherhead finished first and second in diving. Eve turned in her best score of the season. On Monday, January 31st, Hiller Girls Hockey fell to a very good Norwood team 6-1. The girls hockey team, who has been short rostered as of late, continues to improve and keeps games competitive. After a tough loss to Medway, Hiller Boys Hockey turned it around on Monday and took a 4-2 road win versus Holliston. Callum Greenwood, Drew Morse, and Joe Scardino all had goals for the Hillers. Callum Greenwood netted two goals overall in the victory. On Tuesday, February 1st, Hiller girls and boys varsity basketball hosted a doubleheader versus Medfield. Game one featured the girls matchup. Both teams went back and forth in the first quarter. Plus better to Cho. Show back to Fossbender, sends it over, up for three, and good wow. is Carly Hedstrup. Beats it over, Hedstrup for three. Oh, Got she's it. feeling it, man. Feed her the ball, and Medfield needs a timeout in 11-5, Hillers lead. A 16-15 first quarter in favor of the Hillers, but Lily coming for Medfield started knocking down some threes for the Warriors in the second quarter. Beautiful shot, she's got a great arc. Here comes Sampson, feeds it over to the corner, coming, responds nicely. Wow, it's a shootout here. Back. Olenek back to Sampson, now to the corner, coming for three. Got it! Wow. Feeds it over to Sampson, maybe someday. Long three, got oh, it! Boy, Lily a... Cumming, what a way to end the first half. Lily Cumming tallied 11 points in the second quarter, and Medfield led at the half 33 to 24. The Hillers struggled to get the offense going during the game. Medfield outscored them 12 to seven in the third quarter, and that would be enough to help Medfield to the 54 to 41 win. Kiki Fossbender had a team leading 14 points for the Hiller girls, who fall to five and five on the season. In part two of the double header, the boys took the floor. The first quarter featured a number of momentum shifts. Katsakaris feeds it over, Cronin. Running out of time on the shot clock, 10 seconds, up and no good, great block by Marizimi. Yeah, great block. They Got a guy down low back door, and Mirazimi's able to recover for the block. Pantera with the bucket. 14 to 10, Medfield leading, heading into the second quarter, and the Hillers offense really picked it up. With it is Casper driving in, over to Deason Roth, and he finishes. Oh, grab the loose ball, kicks it out, up for three, Paharik, and it's no good. Deason Roth with the rebound, and he puts it in. Casper over to Rayum, up for three, and he responds. Here comes Hyman. Hyman, Casper, yes. Six different Hillers net points in the second quarter as they outscore Medfield 21 to 12 and took a 31 to 26 lead heading into the halftime break. Medfield struck back with vengeance in the third quarter. Back to Cronin, driving in and back he can't finish, put back, count it. Medfield outscores Hopkinton in the third frame, 15 to 10, and the game was tied at 41, heading into the fourth quarter. Deason Roth, thought about it. Deason Roth gonna take it, got it! There's a big three pointer. In the fourth quarter, free throw opportunities and some great offense helped set the Hillers apart. First, the 
front end of a one and one got it. Hopkinton outscores Medfield 17 to 10 in the fourth quarter and takes the win 58 to 51. Nate Casper drops his team leading 17 points. Cole Diesenroth chipped in with 11 points and Sam Pantera had 10 points in the win. The Hillers were nearly perfect from the free throw line, knocking down 20 out of 25 free throw opportunities. Hopkinton and Medfield are now both 9 and 3 on the season. School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh recently joined us and gave a COVID-19 school update. Here's a look. School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh updated on the COVID-19 situation in Hopkinton Public Schools. Have you been going into work? Oh, I surely have. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I, I double mask. I stay pretty isolated in my office, so it, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. If good. If I test negative, I feel fine going to work. Mm hmm. Okay. Good. So I do want to chat a little bit about the schools and uh, what you're observing there and, and how you're seeing things going. I do think that you know I would like to just kind of get the elephant out of the room first and let's get some COVID updates. Uh, what are you hearing from Desi or what's happening? Um, with like you know, interactions with the town and just what's the latest everything COVID? Sure. So just last week, actually, Desi came out and said, voila, we now have two options. You had to pick A or B. And I didn't think A was so favorable, but I thought B was less favorable. <laughs> so um, the, the district is going with option A. And option A, it means that um, we can do symptomatic testing in the schools. So say, for example, there's a staff member or a student who starts to present with symptoms during the day. Um, that person can go to the nurse's office and the nurse can test that person for symptoms of COVID or for uh, COVID positivity or negativity. So that's, that, I think, is, is actually very helpful. Um, but the second piece of it is uh, the state is going to be providing test kits so you know how when you get the COVID test kit, you'll typically get two tests inside yes. the box. Yep. Um, every other week, we'll send the students and staff home with one of those test kits as long as they've enrolled in the program. And we'll send them home on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, they'll actually test at home. And if they test negative, they come to school. And if they test positive, there's an online form that they should fill out. But I think that this alleviates a lot of pressure for the schools. You know, Before, we were doing so much of the testing in school that now if kids are testing outside of school, it will be helpful to identify positivity, but it will also be really nice to just have that take place outside of school and we can focus on teaching and learning. Yes. Oh, that's good. Now, I don't have oversight into a lot of the information from a lot of the schools. Um, I do get emails concerning the high school, and it did seem to me that before the break, there was kind of a strong blip of uh, COVID occurring. And... In the past, you know, uh, few weeks that we've been back, I haven't really seen that much. What are you seeing from from your perspective? Uh, yes, in early December, we had so many COVID cases. They were just coming fast and furious. And I know that you know, parents, students, teachers, they were they were alarmed by the numbers that we were seeing. And According to Sean McAuliffe, we started to get some Omicron uh, variant in our schools maybe a little bit earlier than some of the other communities did. So we know that Omicron is so rapidly spreading, um, super contagious. And so, you know, I think that that accounts for how many absences we had and, and positive tests that we had throughout the month of December. But we are starting to see the cases come down pretty significantly now. I, mean, I don't know if it might have been the middle school today when it reported its case numbers out. I think there was only one student or no, one person, I should say. I don't know if it was a student or a staff member who had tested positive there. So it's kind of nice to watch those numbers diminish. There was a three-week period in January where over three weeks' time, when I report to Desi, we had 558 cases in three weeks' time. Wow. Huge, wow. isn't it? Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Out of, what's our student body? 3,000 people or close? Uh, it's just over 4,000, about 4,010, 15-ish. Right. 4, yeah. You know. Wow. Yes. That's a significant number. It's time to fill you in with some happenings in town. You should know about the Hopkinton Senior Class of 2022. 
is hosting a chance for you to win a gift card every day. It's just $10. You can buy tickets through February 28th at Hopkinton Senior 2022.com. Papers are now available for the 2022 Hopkinton town election. There are a number of spots that are open. So if you're interested in getting your papers, you can contact town clerk Connor Deegan at the town hall. For more information, head over to hopkintonma.gov or our website, hkib.tv. It's the year of the tiger. Join the Hopkinton Chinese American Association live on HCAM this Saturday, February 5th at 8 p.m. for the Hopkinton 2022 Lunar New Year Virtual Gala. There will be some music, dancing, and all kinds of fun. That's this Saturday at 8 p.m. The program will be live on HCAM. Our picture of the week, HCAM producer John Ritz works hard to bring you Hiller's Alpine skiing. Here he is at the slopes over in Shrewsbury, and he does a terrific job to bring you Hiller's Alpine skiing. You can catch Alpine skiing every Thursday at about 6.30 p.m. on HCAM. Upcoming town government meetings include on Monday, February 7th at 7 p.m. We'll have the planning board meeting live on HCAM TV. And Monday, February 14th at 7 p.m. We'll have the zoning advisory committee meeting live on HCAM TV. For all upcoming town government meetings, head over to HopkintonMA.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News, but don't worry, we'll be back next Thursday at 6.30 p.m. From all of us at HCAM, we thank you for watching. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye, everybody.